Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of World Talks here on TVP World, where every word matters. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee, and please join me and my guests on this next interview. Now, Poland is gearing up for a pivotal presidential election in May 2025, with both the ruling civic coalition and the opposition Law and Justice Party seeking to position their candidates. Former Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki and ex-Education Minister Przemysz Czarnik are among uh, PiS's potential candidate, uh, contenders. Meanwhile, civic coalition's primary battles highlights the stakes for the central bloc. Now, what lies ahead of Poland's political landscape? Joining us today on TVP World to explore this is Wawrzyniec Kanarski, rector of Wisła University of Warsaw. Hello and welcome to TVP World. Good evening to you, of course, and good evening to all of the, our viewers. Now, just a moment before we speak, uh, there's actually unofficial information coming out from Polsat News TV, uh, floating another potential name for the uh, law and justice candidate, that being Karol Noworowski. Why is it so hard for the Polish parties to kind of consolidate on one candidate? Why is it so hard? To, to identify a candidate for a presidential race in this country? This is definitely uh, within the, all of the political parties uh, a sort of the illustration that there are some factions inside. And if the factions are going, of course, to have their own position much harder, or let's say more endorsed, they try to find, indeed, their candidates. However, we have to bear in mind the fact that both our largest parties, the coalition, civic coalition, uh, in fact, which uh, does have its main core, which is the civic platform, and uh, from the uh, former ruling party, Law and Justice, both of them are having more or less an image of the party which is called within the political uh, language as a chief parties, namely parties which are predominantly uh, visible and perceived by the role of their leaders. In terms of the Law and justice, this type of the leadership is definitely much stronger oriented into the autocratic type of the leadership. However, in the context of a civic platform or civic coalition, I am going to use those two names perhaps parallelly, we may say that this is also a type of the chief party, but in more I call it uh, a bit not uh, in very research way, but I call it as a velvet type of the leadership or even of uh, the chief party. But definitely the result is the same, namely the leader has the final word. But in case of law and justice, this uh, sort of the transmission, as far as the leader's position is concerned, and his own view about the candidates is much stronger visible. Whereas in case of the civic coalition, the, the primary concept which has been recently developed which is very interesting because it is definitely sort of the pioneer type activities of this party. And we are having at the moment two strong candidates because, as we see, those two candidates, they emerged recently because also of the international context, namely the election of Donald Trump as the president of the United States of America. And this international context is also visible in terms of the so Law and Justice Party, and definitely even one of the candidates for the final approval, Mr. Czarnik, from the Minister for Education, he seems to be a person who likes to be called as a Polish Donald Trump. So finalizing my first, uh, first message to you and to the viewers uh, is that we are having a certain problem within the parties, which... This problem is caused by the international context and also by the some uh, some personal features uh, demonstrated by uh, all of the candidates who are at the moment especially strongly underlined as those who may have a certain sort of the supremacy. This is the case of Rafał Trzaskowski in civic platform and. In the civic in the law and justice is of course Przemysław Czarnek. You mentioned uh, Mr. Navrotsky, but Mr. Navrotsky is definitely a much less known person. And his potential selection, but I have rather doubts if he's going to be selected. But if he is selected, then it will be definitely a sort of the uh, imitation of the idea already discovered by the uh, Jaroslav Kaczyński environment and himself to perhaps go 
towards the same direction as it has been done in 2015 with Andrzej Duda, at the time almost completely unknown politician within the Law and Justice Party. Right. Uh, you mentioned uh, Law and Justice Party leader Jarosław Kaczynski, and I was wondering if you can help us understand what role does his influence play in determined uh, candidate within the party? Uh, I mean, he may determine because he is definitely much... Uh, he is demonst he, he, everyone knows, of course, as far as the Law and Justice Party is concerned, that uh, this party has been his own initiative together with his brother many years ago. So he is the person who has discovered this part and formulated this idea and also all of the important types of the or elements of the program. That's for his determination to uh, find a candidate and to nominate the candidate is something which may be in his mind as well, or in his eyes as well, a sort of the confirmation of his still strong, dominant position within the party. So I think the concept which has been established recently, or imagined recently by Donald Tusk, about the primaries within his party uh, cannot be absolutely, uh, I mean, confirmed or, or cannot be done within the uh, law and justice, because law and justice is much more, uh, much more stronger party in terms of the type of the chief uh, of a leader as a chief position uh, right now. Is there an argument to be made that if uh, they don't have a primary election going into the election, that they might not be choosing the most popular candidate to run up against the civic coalition? I, would, I wouldn't say, first of all, that the primary elections are not right now the concept for the law and justice. I mean, this nomination will be done by Mr. Kaczynski. We know it, of course, although they imitate, they are going to uh, develop sort of the internal democracy system. But the real primaries are done, will be done within the civic platform. The problem is that those two candidates within the civic platform are having quite different images uh, in a sense of the uh, of the of the of the emploi, political emploi, if I can use this French word, which I like, uh, Mr. Chaskowski, he has been uh, for years uh, perceived as someone who is going to stand again for the presidency after an unsuccessful campaign of him in 2020. But Radosa Chikowski has emerged very recently, as I said, because of Donald Trump election and because of the deterioration of the international situation which is caused by the war between, uh, especially uh, after, after the aggression of Russia against uh, Ukraine. And uh, definitely Sikorsky, he is very competent person in terms of international policy underta undertaking and understanding. But he's a person which much more selfish type of his own, uh, own uh, uh, features as a politician. He's a person who demonstrates a sort of the uh, political predominant perception of himself. He would like to be much stronger, I think, than he is right now. But his position and his determination to stand in these primaries is also seconded by quite large number of people within the civic platform, which is, by the way, very interesting because we can not suddenly notice that there are two important fractions, fractions uh, within the, uh, let's say, important and significant politicians within the civic platform. Those two fractions which support each of the candidates uh, demonstrate their readiness uh, to support and to endorse, but I'm absolutely sure that despite the fact who is going to be elected as a final candidate of the civic platform, the other candidates, which will be defeated, he should definitely give his own support to this one who will be the winner. Okay. Last but not least, uh, the foreign policy position of the civic coalition candidates are relatively clear. Uh, do we know what, what the foreign well, position will be for the whoever becomes the primary, well, whoever becomes the candidate for the Law and Justice Party. The candidate for the civic platform. Uh, I mean, I mean, is there any clear foreign policy position for Law and Justice candidates, or are there? Is it going to be determined on who is going to be running? 
Yes, I understood correctly your question. I think that the, of course, the experience of Mr. Sikorsky is definitely much, much more, much, much deeper comparing to Chaskowski. But Chaskowski, he is also very uh, strongly involved in the practical politi- politician because, first of all, always a close collaborator of Donald Tusk. He has been before also the deputy, European deputy in the European Parliament. So he also knows international perspective. However, he has never been minister for the foreign affairs, but he has been serving also in, within the international environment. So I don't think he is not an experienced person. He is experienced, but this is the this is the question of the mentality. The mentality of Chaskowski is definitely... Uh, might be called as, as mentality which may may, may uh, appeal to the largest groups of the society because he seems to be more sympathetic, if I can use this term, comparing to, to Sikorsky, who is, uh, he's a classy politician indeed, right. but he's also very, very rigid in some of his uh, words, whatever he's going to use, especially... Not uh, unfortunately, only we the are of the international running a little bit short on time, the, but thank you so much for your input and insight and helping us break down all of this. I really appreciate it. Thanks for being with us on TVP World. Cheers. Thank you, too. Thank you. And thank you for watching this edition of World Talks. Before more news, update, and commentary, please stay tuned to TVP World.